picking. Let's crack on then. So I want to say, even if picking isn't your main interest, practicing picking will still get you good, will still make you good in other areas. Practicing picking will improve your right hand technique, your strumming technique. If you use your left hand when you pick, which is usual, then your left hand work will improve. If you practice doing picking exercises, which involve your left hand, your chord changes will be quicker. So areas where you do want to improve will still improve. It's all good. Okay, anyway, moving on. Okay, so first and foremost, arguably the most important part about picking is how you're holding the pick and the way I would recommend holding it, the way many, many famous guitarists hold a pick is like this. So first thing is like this. It's not too bent, but it is bent. The pick's gonna sit there on that part of the first finger and the thumb's gonna clamp down on top. What you wanna try and avoid is your thumb and first finger sliding off too far like this, okay? So you want it like that. There you go, let's crack on. Okay, so if you saw my last video, I referenced picking and a particular exercise where you just pick one string. Don't worry about the left hand, this hand just sits there, it looks pretty. This hand, you're just picking. Just one string over and over and over just to get used to doing it, to get it moving, to get it doing the right thing. So again, talk about not picking from the elbow. So you don't want this, you just want the movement to come from the wrist, okay? Just get used to picking on every string. So that's a really good exercise to start off with. Get a metronome, get it on a tempo, some speed that, makes, that, that suits you, doesn't matter how fast it is. And what you're looking for to begin with, especially at the beginning, is not speed, you're just looking for, for kind of comfort. Are you picking the string easily? If you find that this is happening, right, then there's something going wrong. You're either holding the pick too hard, or you're not holding enough of it, so you're trying to get too much of the pick through the string. So what you want to do is just relax it a little bit. You don't want to hold it too hard. Relax it. Try and hold a bit more of it so there's only a little bit sticking out the end. And then just get used, just get used to trying to get the pick to go through the string. To get it to go through the string as easily on the way down as it is on the way up. So that it just, okay. You're looking for consistency, for fluidity. Okay, so that every note that you pick is the same volume. And when you've got that, then you can start thinking about speeding up until you can pick comfortably, just down, up, down, up, down, up, same volume, don't try and speed up. If anything, go slower, just after that, go for it. Okay, so that gets your right hand going, and now we have to get the left hand going as well, because it's important we get the left hand going, because it's important your hands work as a team when you play the guitar. So, your basic four note a string exercise that Every single guitar teacher in the world probably teaches and should teach because it is a good exercise. It might be boring. In fact, it is boring and it doesn't sound very tuneful, but it will get the hand, your left hand going and it will get the right hand going with it. So it's first finger in the fifth fret, second finger in the sixth, third finger in the seventh, little finger in the eighth, one note at a time, each string, one string at a time. When you get to the end, You've done an up pick, you should be doing an up pick. If you haven't done an up pick on the last note, if you've done it as a down pick, something's gone wrong somewhere. So it's important, it's down, up, 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 pick it again, down, up, 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 down, up. Now, it's important because you should be going to a new string with a down pick every time, if you do it properly. What tends to happen is people get good at playing it going down. So what you should try and do, what you could try and do, is start from the start from the, sort of the back end, you might say. So when you make a mistake at any point between there and there, you're not having to go all the way back to there. You can just basically just knit back down to there again. Oh, I made a mistake. 
Now, once you've done that exercise, starting with a down pick, try and do it with an up pick as well. Try and feed that into your practice routine as well. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And really strange things start to happen with your hands. Like you just don't want to do it properly. You start changing string at the wrong time, but that's okay. So slow it down, focus on it, work through it. And as a party piece, it's, there's no harm in doing it. <laughs> Why not? Practice it, it's good. And backwards as well, obviously backwards. Backwards is harder though. You find backwards is harder and there is a reason why. We can go into it at some point in a, in a future video if you're interested. Leave a comment below if you are. Yeah, try and get that in somewhere. So next up, so you've done four notes of string. Now it starts to get a little more exciting, a little more interesting, a little more functional, okay? So this is just getting your left and your right hand working together. Next up, try and do three notes of string. And this is really, really awkward. Because what happens is, is consequently, because we're doing three notes of string, we're doing an odd number of notes of string rather than an even number, we're going to need to change what direction we're picking the next string on. So we're going to go down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay. It's good also to practice which fingers, to change which fingers you use. Rather than just going first, second, and third, try going second, third, little. And also the different permutations in between. So first, second, little, first, third, little, yeah. Doing it with two notes as well as three is also really cool. Um, you can do it either just in that oh so melodic way, or you could use a, a pentatonic scale. So the minor pentatonic, which is five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight, and then eight, five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five. And that's your two notes of string, and it gives you something a little more pleasing to the ears rather than... You get the idea. One note of string. There are loads of ways. I, I, just anything. You could even just pick one string at a time. Okay, so now to spice things up a little bit, because picking in the real world, outside of the comfort of your own exercises, is not quite as simple as four notes a string, or three notes a string, or two notes a string. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the four note a string exercise, and we're going to add an extra note on at the end of every pair of strings. So it's the first two strings, down, 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 up, down, up, roll a little finger back, and then continue playing through the exercise to the next pair of strings, Roll the little finger back again. Okay. When you get to here, that is the first note of going backwards. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Roll the first finger back, continue playing through. Roll the first finger back. Okay, so just a couple more exercises now. This next one is probably the most realistic of all the exercises. So it's going to be first finger, fifth fret, uh, fourth string, and then third finger, seventh fret, fourth string, first finger, fifth fret, third string, back to the seventh fret on the fourth string, back to the fifth fret on the third string, up to the seventh fret on the third string, back to the fifth fret on the third string, down to the seventh fret on the fourth string, and then back down to the fifth fret on the fourth string again. So it's gonna be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then we repeat that. Okay. Okay, so starting with a down pick all seems fairly simple. Now try and do it with an up pick to begin with. And you may well find your hands not doing as they're told. That's okay, practice it. So the last things I want to look at are Changing strings and skipping strings. Now, no prizes here. There are only two ways of doing that. You either go down pick to an up pick or an up pick to a down pick. Pick a pair of strings that are adjacent, first of all, and just uh, start with a down pick on one string and then do an up pick on the other string 
and go back and forth between them, like so. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then change it over. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Also, pick strings that aren't adjacent, so start skipping them. Or, and try and do that with all of them. So at the, at the extreme, and so on and so forth. So in order to make practicing this slightly less mind-numbing, there's a really nice song that you can play called There She Goes. Now to play this, put your second finger in the third fret of the D string and keep it there. It's really nice, so it's like an anchor point. We're always going to go back to it between every other note we play. And it's going to be third fret on the E string, fifth fret on the E string, second fret on the E string, third fret on the E string, open E string, and then you pivot between the E string and the B string a few times before going down to the G string. Now I'll walk you through it. So, we get this. We start with the up pick on the third fret of the B string, and it's gonna be. So practice it with, practice going um, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, which is the most natural way of doing it as the accents fall uh, on the first string and that first series of notes. But also, I mean, ultimately, practicing it the other way around is very important, but understand that when you come to play it, it will be more natural to go that way. So, and that, that.